leadership of none other than the Honorable Senior Bishop, Dr. Herman H. Davis. Hallelujah. This is the place where everybody is somebody, and Yahweh is the ruler of us all, but that is only if you want him to be. The music that is playing in the background, we do not own the rights to this music. It is the United House of Prayer for All People. Those watching via Facebook Live and our YouTube channel, Greater New Jerusalem Live, go ahead and take that quick second to like this post, comment under this post, and share this post to your social media platforms so that way you're not the only partaker of this powerful, pure word, but also those who are your friends or family members can also be partakers of this word as well. And also, if you have not already, go ahead and head on over to our YouTube channel, Greater New Jerusalem Live, and hit that subscribe button. Hit that notification bell that pops up on the right side and hit all so that way you're always notified whenever we go live. And last but certainly not least, if you have not already, whether you're here in person or even at home, pull out your cell phone devices and put it on the vibrate or silent mode to not disrupt the flow of the spirit, whether you're here personally or either watching virtually. Definitely want to get what the Father has for you at this time. All those who are able to stand, may we all stand to our feet as we have our scripture coming from our very own Deacon DeAndre Davis, following that prayer coming from our very own Elder Stephon Seymour. Let's receive them both as they come by saying, Hallelujah. Amen. Praise y'all, we everybody. Amen. Scripture will be coming from Yachanan Mark, which is the book of Mark, the sixth chapter, starting at the first verse. Then he went away from there and came into his own country, and his disciples followed him. When the Sabbath day came, he began to teach in the synagogue, and many who heard him were astonished, saying, Where has this man received these things? What wisdom is this which is given to him, that even these acts of power are done by him? Is not this the carpenter, the son of Miriam, the brother of Jacob, Jacob, Yasef, Joseph, Yada, and Simon? Are not his sisters here with us? And they were offended by him. But Yahshua said to them, A prophet is not without honor, except in his own country, among his own relatives, and in his own house. But he could do no mighty acts of power there, except that he laid his hands upon a few sick people and healed them. And he marveled because their unbelief. So he went to the surrounding villages teaching. Amen. I've read Yachanan Mark, which is the book of Mark, the sixth chapter, verses one through six. May Yahweh add a blessing to the readers, hearers, and doers of his holy word for the edification of our soul. Hallelujah. Our Father, which are in heaven, hallowed be thy holy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. In earth as it is in heaven, Father, we come to you once more and again, thanking you for sitting high, looking low, having all power in heaven and earth, Father. Thanking you for being a heart fixer and a mind regulator. Thanking you for never leaving us nor forsaking us, Father. Father, we come to you once more and again, thanking you for your manservant, Father. Father, we just ask you just to continue to have your way in this life, Father. We ask you to continue to strengthen him from the crown of his head to the soles of his feet. And whatever he's standing in need of, we know that you know all about it, Father. Father, we just ask you to continue to camp your angels round about him, Father. Give him the peace that surpasses our understanding, Father. We ask you to continue to strengthen him, Father, like only you can. And, Father, we ask you to touch our sick and shut in, Father. We ask you to bless those that are on their way and those that desire to be here but are unable to be here, Father. And, Father, we ask you to go over their airways, Father, and just open our minds, Father. And, Father, we just ask you just continue to let our minds be stayed on thee, Father. And, Father, and just it's a such a time as this, Father, we just ask you just continue to have your way in our lives, Father. Father, we just ask you to let the anointing destroy all yokes, Father. And in everything that's not like you, Father, we know that you're able to do it right now, Father. And, Father, we ask you just continue to let us walk by faith and not by sight, Father. We ask you just continue to... Mm, Keep us when we don't want to be kept, Father. And, Father, we just ask you just once more and again, ready our minds for the service, Father. And we thank you in advance for the word that's going to go forth, Father. And, Father, in these blessings, all blessings we ask in Yahshua the Messiah's name, we do pray. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
We thank Yahweh for the beautiful scripture coming from our very own Deacon DeAndre Davis and the beautiful prayer coming from our very own Elder Stefan Seymour. Now comes a part of the service that we all can participate in, and that is our scripture shower. So if there's a scripture that is on your heart that you would like to read at this moment, we just ask that you stand to your feet so that way those who have the mics can see you and you will be able to read the scripture that is on your heart. And if for whatever reason you are unable to stand for a certain period of time, that's all right. We want you to read your scripture as well. We just ask that you raise your hand high enough so that way those who have the mics can see you and can come to you as well and you can read the scripture that is on your heart as well. Hallelujah. Psalms, the 11th chapter, starting at the first verse. In you, Yahweh, we put our trust. How can you say to us, flee as a bird to your mountain? For our foes bend their bows. They ready their arrows that they may shoot secretly at the upright in heart. If the foundations are destroyed, what can the righteous do? Yahweh is in his holy sanctuary. Yahweh's throne is in heaven. Yahweh's eyes do see all. His eyelids try the children of men. He tests the children of men. Yahweh examines the righteous, but the wicked and the one who loves violence he hates. Yahweh rains snares, brimstone, fire, and tempest upon the wicked ones. This is the portion of their cup to be. For Yahweh is righteous. He loves righteousness from his own. Yahweh's face beholds all those upright in heart. Hallelujah. Psalms, the 67th chapter, starting at the verse. Yahweh be merciful to us and bless us and cause your face to shine on us. Salah. May your way be known on earth. May your salvation be known among all nations. May the people praise you, O Yahweh. May the nations praise you. May the nations be glad and sing for joy, for you will judge the peoples righteously and govern the nations of the earth. Salah. May the peoples praise you, O Yahweh. May the nations praise you, one and all. Hallelujah. Psalms 150, beginning at the first verse. Hallelujah. Praise our Father Yahweh. Praise Yahweh in his sanctuary. Praise Yahweh in his mighty heavens. Praise Yahweh for his mighty acts. Praise Yahweh according to his excellent greatness. Praise Yahweh with the sound of the ram's horn shofar. Praise Yahweh with the lyre and harp. Praise Yahweh with the tremble and dance. Praise Yahweh with the string instruments and flutes. Praise Yahweh with the loud cymbals. Praise Yahweh with the high-sounding cymbals. Let everything that has breath praise Yahweh. Hallelujah, Yahweh. Praise Yahweh. Hallelujah. Psalms, the 12th chapter, starting at the first verse. Help us, Yahweh, for the righteous man ceases. Faithful men fail from among the children of men. With his brother, they speak vanity. With their sweet and double hearts. Great Yahweh shall cut off all flattering lips. He shall cut off the tongue that speaks proud things. Those who say with their tongues, we will prevail. Our mouths are our own. So who is the ruler over us? The poor are oppressed. The needy sigh. Then Yahweh will say, now I will rise. I will give my salvation to him who longs for it. The laws of Yahweh are pure laws. Like silver refined in an earthen, earthen furnace, purified seven times. You will keep them, O Yahweh. You shall protect them from this generation. The wicked walked on every side, O Yahweh. Then the vilest men are exalted. Hallelujah. And this is the word of Yahweh. Hallelujah. Come on, let's give Yahweh some praise. Let's give him the praise, give him the glory, and give him all the honor as the praise and the boastful leaders come forth. Let's receive them by saying hallelujah. Praise Yahweh, everybody. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise Yahweh, everybody. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
bring you greetings from Greater New Jerusalem Temple of Truth under the leadership of our own senior bishop, Dr. Herman H. Davis. We didn't come out for any other reason but to give Yahweh the praise. We want to give him the praise because he woke us up this morning clothed in our right mind. Didn't have to do it. So glad that he did. He allowed our golden moments to roll on yet a little while longer. Hallelujah. For this is the day that the Father has made. Let us rejoice. And be glad in it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise Yahweh, everybody. Praise Yahweh. 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 Give him glory, somebody. Praise Yahweh. Give him glory, somebody. Praise Yahweh. Praise Yahweh, everybody. Praise Yahweh. Oh, everybody. All oh, the praise Yahweh. Give him glory, somebody. Praise Yahweh. Oh, give him glory, somebody. Praise Yahweh. Praise Yahweh, everybody. Praise Yahweh. Oh, Praise him. 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 Praise Yahweh, everybody. Praise Yahweh. Praise Yahweh, everybody. Praise Yahweh. Praise Yahweh, everybody. Praise Yahweh. Oh, everybody. Give him glory, somebody. Praise Yahweh. Oh, give him glory, somebody. Praise Yahweh. Praise Yahweh, everybody. Praise Yahweh. Oh, everybody. everybody ought to praise Yahweh. Give him praise. Praise him. 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 Praise him. Praise him. Praise him. Oh, praise him. Praise him. Praise him. Praise him. Praise him. Praise him. Give Yahweh honor. Praise him. And all the glory. Give Yahweh honor. Praise him. And all the glory. Praise him. Oh, praise him. 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 Did I tell you it would be all right? Did not tell you. It would be all right. Well, did not tell you. It would be all right. Well, he told me to tell, tell you. you. It would be all right. Well, did not tell you. It would be all right. Did not tell you. It would be all right. It's going to be all right. Yeah. It would be all right. It's got to be all right. Yeah. It would be all right. It's gonna be all right. He promised me all right. It's got to be all right. He promised me all right. All right. All right. Oh, all right. All right. All right. All right. Oh, all right. All right. Well, did not tell you it would be all right. Did not tell you it would be all right. It's got to be all right. Yeah. It will be all right. It's gonna be all right. Yeah. It will be all right. It's got to be all right. It's got to be all right. He promised me all right. It's gonna be all right. 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 It's gonna be all right. He promised me. Well, he told me to tell you it would be all right. It's got 
got to be all right. It's got to be all right. It's gonna be all right. It's gonna be all right. He promised me all right. He promised me all right. That it would be all right. That it would be all right. It's got to be all right. He promised me all right. That it would be all right. He promised me all right. All right. All right. All right. In the morning, when I rise, in the morning, when I rise, I don't want no trouble, when I rise, I don't want no trouble, when I rise, and I got to see Yahshua, when I rise, yes, I want to see my Yahshua, when I rise, in the morning, in the morning, when I rise, in the Break in the morning when I rise. Said I want to rise holy when, when I, I rise. Said I got to rise holy when I rise. Said in the morning when I rise. In that break in the morning when I rise. Said I don't want no trouble when I rise. Said I don't want no trouble when I rise. And I got to see my Yahshua when I rise. Said I wanna see my Yahshua when I rise. Said in the morning, in the morning when I rise. In the break in the morning when I rise. Said I don't want no trouble when I rise. I don't want no trouble when I rise. Said I got to see Yahshua when I rise. Said I want. Hallelujah. When I rise and in the morning When I rise In the morning, in the morning When I rise And I got to see Yahshua When I rise Oh, I want to see my Yahshua When I rise and in the morning, in the morning oh, When I rise In the break, in the morning oh, When I rise and in the morning in that break in the morning, when I rise, said I want to rise holy, when I rise, said I got to rise holy, said I don't want no trouble, when I rise, I don't want no trouble, when I rise, said in the morning, in the morning, when I rise, in that break in the morning, oh, yeah. when I Come on, put your hands together. Put your hands together for we know in the morning oh, yeah, we want to see yeah, Yahweh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hallelujah. We don't want no trouble when I rise. Hallelujah. Oh. Yeah, 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 yeah. Put your hands together and give him the praise. Hallelujah. For keeping a shield of protection around each and every one of us. Be able to look to your left and look to your right to see who's sitting right next to you. Hallelujah.
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Said in the morning when I rise, I don't want no trouble, but I want to see the face of my Savior when I rise. I don't know about you, but when I rise, I don't want to see nothing negative, but all I want to see is him and him alone. Standing in his power, standing in his authority, standing in his majesty, standing in his peace, standing in who he is all by himself. When I rise, that's all I desire to see. And when do I desire to see it? From the rising of the sun until the going down of the same. Yahweh's name is worthy to be praised. For I will bless Yahweh at all times. And his praises shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make her boast in Yahweh. And the humble shall hear thereof and be glad. Oh, magnify Yahweh with me. And let us exalt his name together. For Yahweh is in his holy temple. Let all the earth keep silent before him. Yahweh is in his holy temple. Let all the earth keep silent before him. Yahweh is in his holy temple. Let all the earth keep silent before him. Let the entire household of prayer say, Amen. Make a joyful noise unto Yahweh, all ye lands. Serve Yahweh with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Know ye that Yahweh, he is Father. It is he who hath made us, and not we ourselves. We are his people, and the sheep of his pasture. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving, and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him, and bless his name. For Yahweh is good, his mercy is everlasting, and his truth endures to all generations. Yahshua, teach us to pray as you taught your disciples, and he taught us in this manner.
Father, have mercy upon us and incline our hearts to keep thy law. Father, have mercy upon us and incline our hearts to keep thy law. Father, have mercy upon me and incline my heart to keep thy law. Hold a prayer, say amen. amen. Hallelujah. Come on, let's give him a hand praise. He was him. Let's give Yahweh a hand praise for giving us another opportunity and another chance to be able to incline our hearts to keep his law, to keep his prophets. Hallelujah. The voice of Yahweh come. With a beautiful a selection. Hallelujah.
Come on, we can do better than that. Let's give the voices of Yahweh another round of applause for always singing to the glorification of Yahweh from the pureness of their hearts. How many of you know or how many of you can say that Yahweh is your father? I know it's more than that out there that can say how many of you can say that Yahweh is your father. And in knowing that, you know that he is greatly to be praised. As they said in the song, from the rising of the sun until the setting of the same. And as I'm taught, that's in your good times he's worthy to be praised. In your happy times he's worthy to be praised. And to the setting of the same. And what is that? As I've been taught, when you're not feeling too well in your body, when you're not feeling too well within your mind, when you don't feel like it, he's still, even at that moment, he's worthy to be praised. So in your good and your bad, in your ups and your downs, he is still worthy of all that and then some. Hallelujah. Such a beautiful, beautiful selection that came forth from our choir, the voice of Yahweh. And before we get to the part that we all have come for, and that is the word, we're going to first call up and have our announcements by none other than our very own sister, Willette Fields. Let's receive her as she comes by saying, Hallelujah. Saints. Hallelujah. We welcome each of you to Greater New Jerusalem, Temple of Truth, where our pastor and founder is none other than the Honorable Senior Bishop, Dr. Herman H. Davis. We are located. We are located at 366 Washington Point Drive in the city of Indianapolis, state of Indiana. This is the place where everybody is somebody, and Yahweh is the ruler of us all, if you want him to be. We hold all those who are in need of our prayers high. We remember Mother Cynthia Taylor, Mother Eva Banks, Missionary Charlotte Clemens, Sister Stephanie Black, Sister Christine Simmons, Brother Ray Jackson, Brother Tyrone Banks, Brother Maxwell Banks, Brother Tyrone Davis and Brother Maxwell Banks, and all who seek our prayers. We invite you to take part in any and all of our services. Our services are as follows. Friday night opens our Sabbath with a 7.30 p.m. service. Use Sabbath school at 10.15 a.m., Sabbath school at 11 a.m., and our main Sabbath service at 12 noon. We also close the Sabbath with a 6 p.m. service. Wednesday Bible classes, youth at 6.30 p.m. and adult at 7.30 p.m. The word unwrap every fourth Wednesday at 7.30 p.m. Please remember to watch the weekly recording of the Divine Enlightenment podcast on YouTube and all podcast streaming platforms. We also encourage you to engage with us in our new segment, Enlighten Me, and join the discussion. Monday, April 22nd, is the opening of Passover. Hallelujah. We will be in all black this day. Service will begin at 7.30 p.m. Passover goes from April 22nd to April 30th. Service will begin at 7.30 each night unless otherwise stated. The Feast of Unleavened Bread will begin May 1st and will continue until May 7th. May 4th will be our official day and we will be in all white that day. Sheave and love offering are due that day as well. Following the Feast of Unleavened Bread, our services will change for the summer months. Friday night evening service will begin at 8 p.m. Sabbath, Sabbath night service will begin at 7.30 p.m. Our services can be viewed on Facebook or here in person in the temple. Blessings to each of you. And now give introduction to our assistant pastor, other Leonard Scott Jr. for the Litany of Truth. Please put your hands together as he comes. Sister Willette, for those beautiful announcements. And now comes another part of the service that we all can participate in, and that is the reading of our Litany of Truth. Hallelujah. That can be found in your monthly bulletins for the month of April on the fifth page, right next to the Sabbath response of reading. If for whatever reason you do not have a program, please feel free to let one of our ushers know, and they will get you a program. And if for whatever reason we are out, that's all right, no need to panic. One of our brothers, that are stand, brothers or sisters that are standing around you, 
will be more than gracious enough to share and read with you. I'll read the first sentence. You'll read the second, and we'll alternate till we get to the last sentence, until which we'll read as one body and one unit together. And as always, let us read with the power and the authority that's been given to each and every one of us. Hallelujah. I have now come to know that in me is the power of my Father. The move of my father Yahweh has given me all ability to move and have my being. I must align myself with all he is to the very best of my ability. Hallelujah. 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 Hall Our elder brother, Yahshua the Messiah, came to give us a visual of the things our father desires of us. And the word became flesh and dwells among us. In my father, there is nothing but power to love and overcome all that comes our way. Hallelujah. I am excited for such truth. And in this truth, I will live, move, and have my being. For me and my father, we are one. So no matter what, who, when, or where, I am going to serve him with my whole heart, allowing nothing to hinder me, for it will be only me who will be here. My soul says yes, and I am going to become all that my father created me to be. I must let the world go together. Me and my father, Yah, we are one. I must guard all that I have and am becoming, for it don't, it will be taken. So I will stand on this truth and return back to the foundation that stands sure, for I am created in his image and likeness. Hallelujah, written by the Honorable Senior Bishop, Dr. Herman H. Davis. The scripture tells us, how can you hear without a preacher? And how can he preach except he be sent? Scripture also says, and I know I sound like I repeat myself every week, but it's the truth. Faith comes by hearing. See, mother knows that faith comes by hearing and hearing from the word of the Father. Well, my brothers and sisters, we have a word-bearing man. And not just a word-bearing man, but the word itself embodied in the flesh of man. A prophet, a leader, a teacher, the honorable senior bishop, Dr. Herman H. Davis. Receive him as he comes with the word by saying, hallelujah. Come on, let's say Let's give him the praise in the house. Hallelujah. We love him, amen, and we bless him, amen. We're so honored to be here. Happy Sabbath to all of you, amen. You may be seated, amen. We are so grateful to be here and to all of you that are in the house, amen. Blessings to you. We are so glad to have Mother Hill here, our mother from Chicago, amen, here in the house. And Michelle, amen, glad to see you, and Amen. I'm glad to see all of you. Amen. I am going to ask that if anyone else comes in, that y'all seat them in the overflow. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. We, we love all of you, and we're so grateful to be here in the presence of the Almighty. I am so honored to see Mother Cynthia Taylor in the house. Hallelujah. Wow. Amen. We are so honored, amen, to have you, amen, to all of our mothers, amen, Mother Ann Beasley, Mother Patricia Ann Winchester, Mother Tina Campbell, Mother Donna Day, Mother Hill, and Mother Taylor, amen, Mother Eva Brown, Eva, man, Mother Eva Banks, amen, she'll kill me, she's here, man. 
Amen. We love all of you. Amen. We're so grateful to be in the presence of the almighty. Happy Sabbath to all of you. Amen. I am honored. Amen. To be here. Amen. To this great choir. Amen. The voices of Yahweh. Amen. I tell you, I am so glad to see all of you. Amen. It is indeed a blessing to be here. Amen. 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 The joy of the Father is our strength. Amen. She's tangled up in that cord. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. To our ambassador and assistant pastor, Elder Leonard Scott Jr. To our assistant pastor, Elder Regina Bishop. Amen. Just to all of you everywhere, it is it is truly an honor, all of you on Facebook. Amen. Brother Ray, I want to talk to you this week. Hallelujah. Brother Ray Jackson, amen. Amen. Some kind of way, I do want to talk to you this week. Amen. Uh, you've been in my spirit all week, all night. Amen. In my dreams. Amen. And I want to talk to you this week. Amen. I love all of you. And since last week we started, I'm glad to see my baby Tamara running in. Amen. That's that's what I like to see the saints do when they know they're running late. Amen. They get in a hurry. Yes, sir. Amen. I'm glad to see all of you in the house. Amen. And so glad to see Suzette feeling better. Yes, Amen. Yes, Still got that cough. Yes, yeah, that cough is a monster. Amen. And it seems like when you think it's gone, here it comes again. Amen. But I thank you for feeling so much better. Amen. Yes, I thank you for your healing. Yes, Amen. Amen. We get young together, aren't we, Suzette? <laughs> I happened to look around the corner sitting up here. I said, oh, my, my, my sister, me and her both aging gracefully. Amen. We've been here a long time. Amen. You've been here how long? About 30-something years. Been a member here about 30? 20, 30 years. Wow. That's a blessing. Isn't it? Amen to deal with one pastor for 30 years. Have I changed? 30 years. Amen. I'm the same man. Amen. I was telling him in the office, I believe then what I believe now. Amen. And I don't back off of it, and I don't move away from it. Last week, we started a message that I'm, I got excited, amen, with it, and I even went into Sabbath evening with him. Still didn't finish it, and I'm glad. Amen. You know, I'm good for taking one verse and preaching on it for a whole year. Amen. I'm excited about the Passover. We have one day to rest and relax on our own fleshly side. Amen. We're resting today on our spiritual side, but tomorrow, amen, is Sunday, so we We'll absolutely do nothing but prepare ourselves for Monday, which is the opening of the Feast of the Passover. Amen. It has been so many things the Father has shown us in his approval of his holy feast days. And many of you know that Passover is one day literally. Amen. Uh, but because this is a leap year, amen, the fast lasts. From the 22nd to the 30th, the 30th, if I'm not mistaken. Amen. So we will be in service almost two weeks nonstop. Amen. We can do it. You're looking at a church that's been in service 150 days nonstop. So we, and I'm so glad, and we're going to do it. <laughs> Amen. If you ever want to see Bishop Davis, give you a look. Come I'm telling me you can't make it. Yeah. Hey Amen. What are you talking about? Yes, Ain't that right? Yes, well, I went to work. Well, if you can go to work, you can go to church. Yes, Hallelujah. Ain't that all right? So I just love all of you. We we started last week in the book of First Tim Second Timothy, I'm sorry. Second Timothy the first chapter and 
I think we got from the first, believe it or not, we got from the first to the sixth verse. But our intent is to get to the 14th verse. Our intent. Hallelujah. I told Mother Hill I don't want her to come to church no more. She's dressed like this. Very new to rules. I know how to dress, but Mother Hill, you sure enough worked it out today. Amen. With the hat cocked just right. My grandmother used to say, you're not sharp until you got a lid on your head. And it's got to be cocked into the face. Not sitting on the back of your head like you're riding a horse. Hallelujah. Amen. I'm, I'm, I'm glad to have Mother Hill home. Amen. We love Mother Hill. I do. Amen. I know all of you do, but she lives in Chicago. Amen. And her church is here in Indianapolis. And I'm honored that she made it home for the feast, I think. Amen. For the feast. In the book of 2 Timothy. Now, this is one of the writings to uh, Paul. The second second letter of Saul or Paul to Timothy. Timothy was a young man. We look, I look at all these young brothers around here. It's a lot of Timothys. And I pray that they learn because the world is taking, taking our brothers. Amen. And they're either getting caught up and messed up by relationships or babies and all crazy, amen. They don't have a standard. They don't have a vision of focus for themselves as young black brothers. Amen. And Timothy had basically lived with Paul. He, Paul was his spiritual father, his mentor, his confidant, his everything. And Timothy loved being with Paul to the point that, and I'm just going to talk briefly before we go into the scripture. Timothy talked, he loved being with Paul to the point that he didn't ever thought, think about being without him. Whether, no matter what anybody said, no matter what anybody thought, Timothy took it to heart to be with Paul. But Timothy, like Titus, had a mission, and Paul knew that they had a mission. But they kept conversing and writing to Paul. I mean, in this first chapter, a message is holding to the standard. Really, I should have said, since this is an open message and not a message to a particular group of people like Master Builders School of Prophecy, I should have said holding to a standard. My theme says holding to the standard. And a lot of people don't know how to hold to the standard because they don't know what the standard is. In everything that we do in life, it has a principle. Yes. That means a rule, a law. Yes. Even if you do wrong, you know, the, the code of the streets is that you don't snitch. Mm -hmm. and you know how that goes. I don't know all of that, but everything has a principle. And everything has what is called a standard. Something about church, it's so unique to me because when it comes to people getting into the house of prayer that I've incorporated or involved, or, or, or in, well, not incorporated, but what I have seen is that we use every excuse imaginable yeah. to not get ourselves or give ourselves totally to the will of the Father. We don't blame ourselves. We always blame others. We always look for fault in others. 
And when people know, even to us, that we are commandment keepers, and we keep the Sabbath, they seek to find fault in us. Yeah. And that is solely because they live to a different standard. They live, most of them, to what is called Christianity. And Christianity is not biblical. It has been established by, or it was established by the Roman Catholic Church. And out of everything, you'd be so surprised that even books that you have not read yet in the Bible because they're not there, they were removed and they were not even put in due to the Romans. The Roman Catholic Church had a lot to do with even changing the Sabbath from Saturday to Sunday. You got what was the after effect what they had gotten through with and approved and passed down, you got a hold to it. And your grandmother taught your grandmother and her grandmother taught her grandmother and they taught your mother and your mother and your father taught you. Some households teach a standard by teaching the young girls how to conduct themselves, how to carry themselves, how the young men should carry themselves. Sometimes people call them rules. And they say that a lot of times when you don't want to follow rules, you always easily make it seems as if the rule doesn't apply to you. Or it doesn't make sense. It's not ethical. And then those of you that are biblically touched, I won't say biblically inclined, just touched, amen, you find scriptures that verify that it doesn't apply to you. In dealing with the word, the word is unique. <coughs> I said something this morning in the office by way of a question. Why would the father tell us that he was jealous and permit us to have all of these things that we have as gods before him? I think that would be a conflict of interest. So somewhere we've gotten a hold to things that we as fleshly people have become overwhelmed with. They are part of our lives, and it's considered the enjoyment or the fulfillment of life. I'm kind of crazy because some of the things that you take on as your life and the blessings of the Father, I don't consider that a blessing. Amen. Because what is a blessing is when you can have a standard in the Word that have you standing in life. Did you hear me? When you can get a hold of the word, that it just sets a standard in you. That even in your everyday life, you're not perfect. You're not crossing every T or dotting every I. But you won't compromise. You won't take down. You just won't be less than who you know you are. Timothy and Titus, I'm going to talk about both of them for a minute, were with Paul, and Paul injected into them, amen, such standard that no matter what came up or what went, that they would not compromise. They would not give in, nor will they give out. And I don't know about you as a leader and as a few of you mentors, um, a few of you, I, I'm a mentor to a few of you, amen, and, and a thorn in the flesh to a lot of the others, amen. But in reality, is that helping you? Good, amen. In reality, 
when we think about the Father, it 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 it, 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 it baffles me of how do we think about him? Do we think him as to be someone to give us what we want? I pray and it happens. Cry and it happens. Ask and it happens. I think we've misunderstood him because number one, he is a praying, answering father. Your prayers may not be answered in the way you want them answered. He promised that he would wipe all tears from our eyes, but maybe not after they've lapped under our chin. I don't know if you've ever cried to where you can't see your way. Your tears blind your vision. Amen. Your situation clouds your mind to where you can't see a clear way. See, a lot of people... Even some of you here haven't been through anything. So it's easy for you to just be in church and then get tired of church. Have you ever heard of people say, I've been in church all my life. I'm tired of church. Come on, come on. I never could get that, that understanding because I don't see how you can get tired of something that gives you life. The only reason why you get tired of this is because you no longer want to live by the standard. Amen. So when you don't want to live by the standard, you got to find a plausible excuse that is excusable to you and for you. And how many people find excuses? Amen. 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 All around. Some of you parents, you hold it on to your children when you really need to let them go. That's hard to do. But you really should because... Always remember, if they don't want a standard, a standard that can only be taught. But it's not a standard until you, as an individual, decide to stand up in it. So Paul uh, taught uh, Titus and Timothy. They were with him night and day. They lived with him. They slept with him. They ate with him. They were chastened by him. Oh, yes. Leadership. My position requires me to even chase in you. Amen. Amen. People don't want me to, they don't want my opinion because they know if I'm not for something, I say that. Because I'd rather tell you the truth about something and you get mad at me than for me to lie about it. Amen. And uh, then it's hanging over my head. So in the midst of the standard, Isaiah number one <laughs> began to talk about a standard because Israel, I'm, I'm, I'm going to flip back to volume one, Old Testament. Israel was the chosen people of Yah. They were people of color. Amen. Hallelujah. So all of you in here can just imagine what type of people they were. Amen. I heard this morning Farrakhan talk about this was back in the 90s when he had a, a, a lecture or something, but he was talking about buying land in Africa and going to Africa and the people set up their own government and their own this and their own that and black this and black that. And I said, and it's still going to be a mess. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And amen. We, we, we can tear ourselves away from the white man, but we can't tear ourselves away from who we are. Amen. Because we're still killing one another. Amen. I, I'm sure y'all know that. We're, we're still allowing the streets to take us out. And, 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 and really, the white men don't have to do much to you but just sit and wait for you to end up in the morgue. Because you're killing your own self. You're killing your own self by your own consciousness if you're not killing yourself by way of guns and drugs. You're killing yourself by way of thinking. Amen. And, and so we know that Isaiah had a rough job because he's now in volume one in, in the Old Testament and uh, he's talking to Israel. And in talking to Israel, he's informing them, <clears throat> first of all, that the father in the first chapter of Isaiah up to the 39th 
and a half chapter, he's warning Israel that the father is not pleased. Now, we all talk about having our own personal relationship with the father. Everybody. Haven't you heard that? I got my own personal relationship. Uh, Y'all got to understand why people are saying that. That is because they don't want to be beholding to nothing and no one. So they go off on their own page. They go off on who they are and, and them and the father. And the father knows them. And I'm sure here's one of the famous ones. He knows my heart. Amen. Yeah, he knows your heart, but many people say he knows your heart, and they're able to go do drugs, but they don't go to church. Amen. Y'all not getting my point. So when we begin to look at the word, and we begin to look back to Isaiah, the great prophet, and the things that was going on at that time, from the fall of Adam and Eve, the standard of holiness has been the mission the standard to the people, the standard of men and the standard of women have been the mission ever since the fall of Adam and Eve. Prior to that, Adam had a stand. He was created in the likeness and the image of his father, and the stand of the father was in Adam. Hallelujah. And the stand that was in Adam then became the stand in Eve. Do you get my... Do you get how I put that now. I don't want you to say the stand of the father was in Eve because that's not true. I don't care how you twist it or turn it. The stand of the father was in the likeness in the image of his creation, which is man. And then out of man, the rib came. Out of man, then woman came. Hallelujah. So the standard that was in man is of the father and the, the standard that was in man should now be in the woman. But the reality is, is that through all things, deception works smoothly. It works then, it worked then, it worked in between, and it works even now. <clears throat> deception, you could be the best preacher and out of nowhere, Someone will catch your eye and your whole attention will be taken off of heaven and put on flesh. Now, many of you, if given the right opportunity, you can fight like hell your way back. But fight like hell, you must. Because the enemy plays, she plays to keep. She does not play to loose any of us. Amen. If you're sitting around here saying, why can't I feel the spirit of the almighty? Well, you're, you're not trying. On, That's the ultimate. He, he don't owe you no special touch. On, he doesn't owe you to come down and touch your head and touch your hand. And my child, my child. When you just have to think about him. And that should be enough to give you a praise. And make you say hallelujah right there. Y'all may not shout today. And then you're going to shout hallelujah. So, so here now you got the prophets of old, volume one in the Old Testament, teaching and prophesying and delivering messages to the people that are making them, can I say it? Pissed off. That's the word. Amen, 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 amen. The, see, 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 this word will make you mad before it makes you glad. Why? Because anything that comes against what you want to do is going to always... Heck, oh, how many of you got kids? Have you ever had to tell them no? Do they like it? Do they walk away saying, <laughs> thank you, mama, for saying no? Huh? Do they? I don't care what child you have. No is a word that your child just does not like. He's all right, Summer. He's all right. Amen. He's, it's, it's just something about no. So when you come to the house of prayer, you come to hear no. Ain't that something? 
Now, I know you're grown, and can't nobody tell me what to do, and I'm grown, and I do what I want to do, but the word says, if you come to my house, he said, Habakkuk 2 and 20 says, but the, the Father is in his holy sanctuary. Let all the earth keep silent before him. Now, let's explain what he means by that. He said, let all the earth keep silent. He's in his holy sanctuary. The holy sanctuary is your consciousness. Hallelujah. Whether you know a lot about the Bible or not, if you walked in this door, you've entered into another frame of thought. Now, you can pick up what you want when you leave out. But we should be so prayed up in here that you have no other choice but to hear whether you like it or not. Whether it's what you want to hear or not. You hear something that pisses you off. I'm not going to use that word too often. Hallelujah. So in the midst of that, when you come, the ultimate of our journey is to reconstruct I mean, every week when you come, every Bible class, every Sabbath school, every opportunity you come to the house of prayer, what it's doing is chiseling away what has been put in you. That's why the word is hard. It's not hard because it's hard. It's hard because it's going against the grain. Hallelujah. It's going against what your mama taught you, what your daddy taught you, what the world taught you, what you even taught yourself, what you thought you wanted, what you wanted, what you tried, what you liked, what you didn't like, what could have killed you, what didn't kill you, what you wanted that could have killed you, but you still wanted it. When you come in here, this word says, look here. This is your no place. This is where you don't get your way. This is where you don't get to throw a tantrum and mama buy your toy, buy your drink, or buy what you want. Y'all know how it is at the store. You never let me get nothing. Well, he says, who cares? So it sounds a little arrogant when I say, who cares? But really, whether it sounds that way or not, who cares? Because my mission as a prophet sent to you is to reconstruct your thought. That your thinking will change. That it will erect your standard in him that you will be able to hold on to that standard. Hallelujah. So Mother Taylor, in order to do that, we've got to go down into what ails you. Have you ever heard of that? What ails you? What ails you? It doesn't necessarily mean what makes you sick. It, it, it makes you, uh, it, 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 what, it, what it's saying is what makes you tick. What are the things you like that you shouldn't? What are the things that you're doing that nobody else so you think sees? Those are the things. So now, here's Timothy. Isaiah then told them that the enemy will come in like a flood. Amen. So when you come to the house of prayer, don't think that everything is going to move smoothly. Amen. This is the place where the enemy don't like it. And, you, and boy, she really doesn't like commandment keepers. She got the Christians. Uh -oh. She got them. I'm serious. You're able to serve on a day that belongs to her. Because, see, the sun God is a part of her. That's an erection of a demonic pagan god. Now, I know people don't like that, you know, but the truth is what it is. So, because she has already got such a wide range of people, she doesn't want us to keep the Sabbath. She and, and keeping the Sabbath is not the big deal. It's keeping the commandments. Thou shall not kill, thou shall not steal, thou shall not. Y'all know y'all done taught them. Yeah. But everybody hops over, the, remember the Sabbath day. Yeah. Then they hop over to keep it holy. But I'm going to talk about holiness Monday. Hallelujah. So our message deals with standard. That means we come from somewhere. 
go through the refining fire to get to somewhere else. Then when we get there, we look back on where we come from and we appreciate where we've arrived. Y'all didn't get there, did you? Amen. Can you really look back where you come from? And if you ain't gotten nowhere yet, look at the point of you starting. If you're here today, you have made a start. That should be hallelujah right there because yesterday you weren't here. Last night you weren't here. But look at where you are today. Now you can either lie or tell the truth. You can say this is what I want. And then this is what I will pursue. And this is what I will accomplish. Or you can just have a good time for the day. This is not for entertainment purposes only. So you went to the wrong place. Clues Hall. You should have went to Clues Hall. You should have went to Baker Life. You should have went to the National uh, Marat. If you wanted entertainment. Here is a dangerous place. Because it changes your whole pattern of thinking. It changes your whole mind. Paul was so sure that it was. He said let this mind. Be in you, which was also in Yahshua, the Messiah. Can we shout glory? I feel like talking about this today. I feel good in my spirit. Hallelujah, because we've got to set a standard. Amen. People looked at you from where you came from, but they never realized that right in the midst of right there, the Father came right on in and saved you. I remember her. I remember you too, honey. I don't care about folks. You know who him? They can't remember me from nothing but church, though. Not that I crossed every T because you can be in church and still a booger bear. I wasn't a booger bear, but I didn't. I wasn't saved. <laughs> Hallelujah. Y'all can go to places for entertainment purposes. Look how many times you went to church on Sunday. Because it was something to do. It was the right thing to do. Oh, the choir sounded so good. You went through all of the great limbs to get your hair done, your nails done, your eyelashes done. I wish I was preaching that day. I would have anointed you until we got eyelashes on the floor. And y'all see, you, you know, they got this thing now. If y'all see these things that they do with the women's hair right here. It looked like they take eyelashes and lay them on their hair. Have y'all seen them things? Those are dangerous. You be picking them off when to put them on your eye. Ain't nobody never had baby hair that thick. They lying and you fell for it. You got a baby hair way up here. And it's going like this. And they look like, take the eyelashes off and look at them. Take your eyelashes off and mash them. Don't they look just like the one on your side of your face? Hallelujah. Somebody say, it's the truth. So in the midst of our journey, what the Father desires Oh, I, I, they can turn the air condition on. They, they just don't have the air condition on because we that's getting over whatever this is, it makes you cough. Amen. So that's why we don't have it on. Amen. They said don't turn it on. I'm doing well without it myself. I feel good without it. Uh, uh, so, so the purpose of the house of prayer is to change your mind. We can't change you until the word changes your thinking then when your word changes your thinking you change you so when you say bishop trying to change me no i'm just trying to change your way of thinking hallelujah because if i never change your way of thinking we will always be entertaining you the way of thinking is when the word wow that sounds good and I want this for my life. Anybody wants this for their life? 
Come on. I see Sister Michelle got all these young babies. She got three kids, I see. She should want it for her life. Hallelujah. So in the midst of this now, Timothy now has learned the standard. Now, if you with me, you're going to learn the standard. You're going to learn it. I don't care if you're a woman or a man. Amen. I, I can take a whore and turn her into a saint. I sure enough can. Does that sound bad? Y'all know me, Michelle. I, I speak it like it is. Amen. You know why? Because if I can get to her mind, and if I can take her to the word and show her, amen, she will then no longer want to do what she did. Because she'll realize she's better than that. Now, I can never preach in a, a dignified church. I couldn't because I say things that they don't. It's not proper etiquette, you know. Now, when you begin to think about this, Paul, let's talk about Paul. He's a warrior. I'm a warrior. I am a warrior. Y'all can go ahead and be pussyfooters if you want to. I can't do nothing with a pussyfooter. Amen. Is that a bad word? Please help me. Those are just words that I know weak back. I, I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't be with, I can't be preparing, looking, and knowing that a war is coming with somebody that's got a butter knife and they want to have tea and crumpets. I'm going to tell you something that happened that is for real last week, and it's very sad, and my heart goes out to the family, is that on the west side, a man ran into a light pole, and the light pole fell. He was drunk. A police came to see about rescuing him, pulled up on the light pole line on the ground, and got electrocuted to death in his car. The man that hit the pole was drunk. Didn't come out with a scratch. That's something, ain't it? Now, I really don't know why I told you the story, but the ultimate is we don't know what time. We don't know what time. We don't know what time. He never thought that he would be electrocuted. When it comes to war, you don't never know who the enemy is. Boy, I even saw a movie one time about us called The Assassin. And they were over in Iraq fighting. And they were killing all of the soldiers. But came out in the street was a little old lady and a little boy. And they couldn't shoot them. Because it was a little old lady and a little boy, and she went under her robe and pulled out a machine gun, and he pulled out a bomb. Why y'all sitting around here with a kumbaya mentality? There is a move going on that is calling us to cry loud and to spare not. The other day, we had this great eclipse. And everybody made a outing out of it. But nobody really realized what it represented. When you go to the book of Genesis, this is in the beginning. Darkness was upon the face of the deep. And what I liked about the eclipse, as much as it was supposed to cover the sun, it did not. It only covered most of it, but the perimeter all around it was yet still light. Do you see the Father hearing talking other than your conversations and your desires and your prayers and your complaints? I don't feel good and I want this and I want that and I want the other. He's saying, no, listen. 
Somebody's got to listen. So those that are around me, I teach them to listen. And those that don't want to listen, I bless you and move on. Because we don't beg you to do it. You're here on a voluntary basis. So last week, we stopped off with Paul getting uh, sending a second letter to Timothy. And here, he reminded Timothy of his grandmother and his mother. Because there were such spiritual traits in his grandmother and mother that was in Timothy. Now, we may not can remind you of your grandmother and mother. Hallelujah. We must say amen. Some of our grandmothers and mothers are not the ones we want to say. They they got the power of the Father in them. Y'all know that's the truth. But that's on you. Read, Elder Scott. We're going to start at the sixth verse. Second Timothy, first chapter, and the sixth verse. Therefore, I remind you to fan the flame now, of now, the now, gift. Now, Paul is telling Timothy, therefore, I remind you. See, we've got to be reminded. Can you look at your neighbor and tell your neighbor, you are somebody? You are somebody. Oh, Sister Blair, turn over and turn tell we'll let that. Hallelujah. Glory. Ain't that something? So what 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 is that? What did you what did you just do? What did you just do? You encourage somebody, but you fan the flame. You let somebody else know other than yours. That they are blessed as well. It's easy to bless your family. It's easy to bless the one you say you love. But a real blessing is when you can bless somebody you don't know. Hallelujah. I can ride down the street and see somebody on one of those mediums and in my heart tell me to do it. I'll stop traffic and bless them. Now the blessing is, is when I bless them, I become blessed. Now I'm not blessed with money because I gave them money, but I'm blessed with a better way of thinking. Everything we need and everything we should desire should be the changing of our thought. Or when I can think different now, you need to think different, Bishop. No, you ain't got that right. You the one crazy. Hallelujah. With all of your antics. All of your logic. You can't tell the prophet. But the prophet is sent. Believe it or not, the prophet really don't want to tell you. But the prophet has been sent. Called, chosen, and then sit to tell you what thus said the Almighty. Because how can you hear without a preacher? How can he preach unless he be sent? Then the word tell us you got to believe on the one that he has sent. Because if you don't believe me, you still hear as tinkling cymbals and, 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 and sounding brass. You can, go to, you can go to church and go with nothing, sit in nothing, get up and leave in nothing, and walk out and still have nothing. You can do that. Going in the building don't say you're going to get it. And going in a building doesn't say he's there. He's only where his people are. And his people are the ones that keeps his commandments. He said, if you love me, oh, I don't care whether y'all like that or not. I can't go against what he said. He made it clear. If you love me, then you'll keep my commandments. 
Unless there's another one. Unless there's another commandment that I haven't found. We're digging in these lost books. We're digging in the book of Adam and Eve. We're digging in the book of Enoch. We're di digging in the book of, of Maccabees and Sarah and all of that. We're we, we digging because we're looking for more information. Because, see, when you want to set a standard in this, you're not trying to get information to be arrogant. See, that's what, what, what gets some of us. We, 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 we get, you know, knowledge can be dangerous in the wrong hands. But this knowledge in the right way humbles you. Yes, come on. Read Elder Scott. I remind you to fan the flame of the gift of Yahweh. Wait a minute. I remind you to fan the flame of the gift wait, of wait, Yahweh. Wait, 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 wait. He didn't remind them to fan their flame. Uh -huh. Now, I know y'all talking about what kind of flame I got. We won't talk about that. <laughs> that is X-rated. We cannot talk about that, nor do we have the time to talk about y'all flames. I've seen some of y'all flames, baby. They not even campfire sparks. And you camping around it. So, I'm so glad he has a house. That he has declared his house. So you can't fan no other flame in here. And if you do, you got me to pay the price. Because anybody know me know we don't fan no flames other than this one. So Paul didn't have to go explain to Timothy what he meant by fanning a, fanning a flame. See, have you ever talked to somebody and you got to explain to them, well, I mean this. <laughs> I, could, I, could, I could call Sister Candace up and, and she could be uh, saying something wrong and I can tell her, shut up. And she'll shut up. I mean, I'm not joking with shut up. I'm not playing with shut up. I mean, shut up. But I ain't got to explain why. I know you're grown, and, and, I, and I don't mean no harm, but will you be quiet? I don't have to do that. Because when you know who I am, oh, y'all don't hear what I'm saying. See, when you know who the Father is, you know that they're not out there to cut your throat. But to set a standard, you've got to set rules. Hallelujah. Because if you don't stand for something, you know the old saying. You definitely will fall for anything. And I've seen some of our young people fall for anything. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. And some of you compromise with their fall because you want to fall. You just ain't bold enough. Hallelujah. But the fall is dangerous. Because if Sylvia falls, and I look at her fall and fall like she fell. She may get up and come back, but I may not ever make it back. That's why you have to come out from among them. You can't be here because of somebody. I'm so glad to see you, Michelle. I pray for you all the time. Amen. But the, re the reality of it is, is that you've got to be here for you. Every one of you. I think Ashley brought you or you came with Ashley. But you got you have to come because you wanted to come. Thank you, Ashley. Bless you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. She old missionary. That's my daughter. You know that. It is. That's my baby right there. Amen. But in reality, baby or not, I can't baby her. Because see, those children that you baby won't survive when they get grown. Because they'll look for somebody else to baby them. Y'all got to realize what is cute to a mother is only cute to a mother. Oh, ain't that something? Yo, Johnny looks cute. I told Candace all the time. That's baby Huey. What you talking about? That ain't no baby. 
Heck no. That's something on TV. Yeah. Yeah, I talk about it. Yeah, I talk about it because y'all y'all acting like he's gone. I don't. He crazy. He was crazy then. He's crazy now. And y'all know he was. Y'all crazy. The only thing that makes a difference in your life is the word. I don't care what you got. Money, job, education, uh, this, that, or the other. Nothing will make you until you allow the word to saturate your mind. And the reason why I say saturate because you can't just read it and depend on the word written on the paper because you could be somewhere where you don't have a book or a Bible. You could be in the hospital and you need a word to come up to get you to stay. You could be among friends getting ready to do the same thing you would like to do, but a word needs to come up to hold you. Hide me. In your pavilion, in the secret of your tabernacle. Mm, 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 mm. That's why I'm here. My, 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 my. That's, oh, that's why I'm here. Because of the standard. It makes me stand when I want to lay down. It makes me smile with tears in my eyes. It makes me keep on going when I want to give up. Have you ever looked at your children and said, I could just walk away? And some just say, hold on. Hang on in there. That's what this. I just use your children as an example. This is with life. And this word will tell you, hold on. Help is on the way. It may be rough, but it ain't as rough as it was. Because the places you didn't think you were going to make it out of, you on the other side of that. The heartbreak that you didn't see you getting out of, you now on the other side of that. The relationship breakup that you didn't think you were going to be able to survive, you are now on the other side of that. Somebody say thank you. For the other side of it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Boy, this word is real. <coughs> part, part three. On the other side. On the other side. You got to praise him. See, when your mind gets a condition and the standard of his word gets in your mind, then you begin to praise him on the side of war because you know payday is coming after a while. You're not shouting because you're out of battle. you shout shouting because you're in battle on your way out of it. My, my, my. Ain't that something? I'm sick, but I'm praising my way because I'm coming through. My back is in the wall, but I'm praising it because I'm coming through it. I don't know which way, Mother Taylor, I'm going, but I'm going to go ahead and praise my way because I'm going through it. He said, I'll never leave you, nor will I forsake you. So whatever this is, and whatever that is, and whatever the other is, he's got this, that, and the other in his hand. day the other day I tell you I, with this this flu bug or whatever it was caught so much that your hips hurt amen then both of mine and see I used to have sciatica and I don't want that to ever flare up again on no, myself and nobody else amen but both of them was hurting and then it left one side and went to the other side and the other day bless him the other day I felt like I wasn't gonna make it I felt like boy 
I can't make it. This pain is horrible. This pain hurts. But I kept on rubbing. Y'all don't get my point, do you? I kept on rubbing. I kept on rubbing. I kept on trying to figure out, okay, this pain got to go. Then it got down to a little size. Then it got down to a smaller size. But it was still a pain. But this morning, when I woke up, I jumped up out of the bed and went to the shower and didn't even realize, hey, Chloe, that I had jumped up out of the bed. And I'm standing here right now with no pain at all. I didn't know yesterday that that was going to be my today. But I had to press through it. I could have went to the emergency, but I didn't. I went to, I went to the emergency. I went to him. I, I could have went to a doctor, and I did. I went to him. I don't want to say I got faith and every time I look around, I'm in a doctor's office. Faith is a substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things. I said evidence. So today, I got the evidence of things not seen. I don't know about tonight or tomorrow, but I can tell you about right now. That's what you got to get happy about right now. People say it's all right if you talk about not feeling well. I don't want to talk about that. I'll take it to him in prayer. He's a healer. The world don't believe it. And I'm really beginning to believe what that really means. The world don't believe he's a healer. Anywho. Read for me. So we got to fan the flame. Ain't that what it says? The flame. The flame. So in order to fan the flame, you got to create a fire. Hallelujah. Y'all don't hear me. They don't hear me, do you? In order for you to fan a flame, you got to have a fire. There is no flame without a fire. So somebody says, when I think of the goodness of him, what is the fire? The baptism of the Holy Ghost. Messiah! Hallelujah. You can't fan, fan something that you ain't got. My, 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 my. You got the fan. He said, fan the flame. What is he telling Timothy? You got the Holy Ghost. You got the power. You got the word. You got the Father. Just fan it. He didn't say throw it. See, when, when, this is when you... Not this kind of fan. Come on, Bishop. Believe it or not, this kind of fan it don't cool you off. But this fan cools you off. So he was telling Timothy through your trials, through your tribulations, through your heartaches, no matter what the doctor said, just fan the flame. That means the confidence in him through the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Now, for those of you that feel like you ain't worthy of the Holy Ghost, I want you to know the Holy Ghost is a gift. So a gift doesn't say you have to be worthy of it. You just have to receive it. Ain't nobody in here can get clean enough to get the Holy Ghost. Me included. Hallelujah. But one day he said, receive it. And I did. Can you look at somebody and say, I said, receive it. Messiah. Hey. You got to have a power. Down on the inside. That when you give up, it won't. When you give in, it won't. When you run, it'll be still. Hallelujah. 
I feel like preaching, y'all. I feel like preaching. Hallelujah. Somebody said, I got the fan. The flame of fire. I got the fan. What did he tell him? He said, fan. The flame. He said, the gift of Yahweh. Now, the gift is the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Because this is after Acts. This is after the outpouring of the Holy Ghost. So we all know about the Holy Ghost by now. And Acts 1 and 8 said, but ye shall receive power. Come on, somebody. Come on, somebody. Use what you got. You shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost. Now, here's Paul telling Timothy, you, you know what you got, man. If I can put it that way, use it. Hallelujah. You're walking around here like you're an island. Like you all by yourself. Man. But just don't tell me nothing. I, I don't want to know nothing. What kind of life are you living in? An illusion. Let me tell you something. None of you will ever stand without a leader. All right. So if you ever think you're going to stand by yourself, you lie. And the truth ain't in you. Hallelujah. So when you look at yourself, I look at Mother Tina, I look at Mother Donna, I look even at ourselves sometimes. These bodies do what they want to do. But I tell you, the amazing thing is, the Father would do whatever he want to do with them. Read on this guy. I'm going to try to finish this today. I am still on the sixth verse. I left off on that last week. I remind you wait, to fan wait, wait. the flame. Uh, hold on. That's fanning the flame. Every now and then, you got to get up and just tell him thank you. I don't know why, but I I'm not. You know, they're going to look at me. Who cares? That's why you ought to be somewhere where you can scream. Ah, hey! Somebody scream with you. There's go a flame. There's a fan. I can never fit in in a, a dignified church, I tell you. Because I'm a holler. Amen. I don't know how much jumping I'm going to do, but I'm going to show holler. Hallelujah. Because he's that good. Anybody know he's that good? Does anybody in here love him that much? I mean, to the point that you just loved him. Can you just tell him I love you? Oh, not cute, not primps, primpsy and all of that. I just love you. Can you give him an ugly, ooh, we, I don't care what they think. I love you. up in the morning, I don't do no on my knees prayer. But when I wake up in the morning I roll over and open my eyes, I said I love you. Then I pray. Hallelujah. People talking about, yes, your birthday. I don't want to know nothing about no birthday. Because every day I wake up is a birthday. Hallelujah. Every day he allowed me to see another day is a birthday. Come on, Elder Scott Reed, so we can do something here. I remind you to fan the flame of the gift Somebody of said, Yahweh. Now, I got to go back. See, this is why I get messed up. Some ne Here's another good pointer. He said, I remind you. So Timothy was already in the will of the Father. But sometimes circumstances and situations, you have to be reminded. You have to be reminded that he's good. Sometimes you got to be reminded he's a way out of no way. Sometimes you got to be reminded that he'll make a way for you. 
Ain't that all right? Y'all got this door closed for a reason. Because it's hot. I want to remind you to open it. <laughs> Hallelujah. Come on. So he's reminding them. So now listen, but what, what Timothy could have said. Oh, I know. Ain't that like y'all? Huh? That pride. Oh, I know. I'm the bishop, but I don't mind you reminding me. Because sometimes I forget. Amen. Remind me that he's a healer. Because the other day, Tamara, I could have just laid down on the curb and prayed for the car to just run over this hill. Have you ever been in pain that bad? Pain so severe that you feel like you're getting ready to scream and lose your mind. Now, don't y'all, Bishop, you all right? Yes. Hear what I said. That was the other day. Today ain't no pain nowhere. So get happy because there is no pain right now. And Hebrews 11 and faith says now faith. Hebrews 11 and 1 says now faith. So sometimes we got to praise him for right now. Can y'all praise him for right now? I, I know y'all got to think about later on, but if you can forget about later on and just get happy for right now, I promise you, you're going to feel something. That's what's wrong with us. We're looking too far ahead. We're looking to tomorrow. The next day, he ain't told you to look that far. He said, take no thought of tomorrow. For tomorrow has already got herself together. If you make it, but if you don't, give him your praise today. There's no guarantee. Your age don't guarantee you tomorrow. Hallelujah. It don't guarantee you that. Read the other sky. I remind you to fan the flame of the gift of Yahweh. Of the gift. And the gift is the Holy Ghost. The gift is the Holy Ghost. That's what you should fan when you come in here. Praise him. Happy Sabbath. Glory. Sometimes just the words out of your mouth will heal somebody's body. Your excitement will make somebody else excited. But you come in and looking all around, wise and otherwise. That ain't no flame. Those are suds. Y'all know what sud is? After the flame had burned out. And it ain't nothing but dirty mess. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. People say, well, I want to come back to church, but they're going to judge me. No. The problem is with that, we don't judge you. You judge yourself. Your consciousness. That's the battle zone. But it feels comfortable to blame me. There he go. There he go. There he go, get ready to talk about me not being in church. And I give and I say, you know, the swing in the park down the street. But if I do bring up something about people don't go, that don't mean it's you. And if you one of them, then take it. It builds you. It builds you when you can take chastisement. Now, taking chastisement is not being a yes man in my face and going behind my back or in your consciousness thinking something else. That's how some of y'all do me. I don't care. I say it in your face. When you come back, I'll say it again. And if I meet you at your car, I'll say it there. And if I sit in your car with you on the other side, I'm going to say it there. Because if you think you're going to do something to make me change my mind, you're a lie. Because I thought about it before I even came to that conclusion. And when you got the gift, 
you got to use it. Y'all don't hear that, did you? You can't have this gift and not use it. But we're going to talk about this Monday. Not Timothy, but the gift. I dare y'all to come. I dare you to come, Michelle. I dare y'all to come. Read. Which is in you. Wait a minute. It's in you. Our problem is we're waiting for something to get in us. And if you came to Greater New Jerusalem with any openness in you, it been got in you already. I don't need a whole lot of space, just a little. Yeah. Amen. I don't need a foot, just give me a toe. Right. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And nobody ever come across my path that ain't got received a word. Right. I don't care who you are. Take it and throw it away if you want to, but you sure received it. Yeah. Ain't nobody. Ain't Even those that don't come, they can't never tell you, I didn't get a word at that church. Because they did. Huh? Yeah. They, they, just, they, just, they just don't have a standard. And when you don't have a standard, you, you, you have to set something that looks like a standard. Read. Is Elder Scott gone? Okay. You got it, Elder, Elder, Elder Cook. I want to say congratulations to Jacob for making honorable. Hallelujah. Congratulations. That's what I'm talking about, young black brother making the honorable with a tie on. Pants up on his waist. Hallelujah. Hey, glory. He can, da, 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 da. That's what you want. Brothers with their pants up. And not pants down. Yes, sir. Amen. Come on. Second Timothy. Oh, he's back. Okay. okay, go ahead. <laughs> Verse 6, the latter part. Which is in you through the laying on of my hands. Wait a minute. You didn't get this from the Father. You got this through me laying on my hand. So when you sit up in here arrogant, just remember the source that gave you what you got. Hallelujah. Now, laying on the hands don't mean all the time literally. But if you was up under my tutelage, I laid my hands on Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I laid them on you. That's how you got to be where you are. And that's how you're going to get to where you're going. So you can go on and talk about the father told me Honey, he ain't told me. And until he tell me, it's going to take my hand to serve the gifts in you. See, what I love about him is that he don't give you room to bypass his plan. Ain't that all right? He, he don't, he don't, he don't. He don't let you dictate to him through your whims and your wants, yes. your complaints, and you in your windows. Yes. What did he say again? Which is in you through the laying on of my hands. Now, that means I put this in you. Now, I ain't put something in you that comes out. So I put this in you that if I'm not around you, you can pull this up in you. Ain't that all right? When you go home, Michelle, you can pull this up in you. It ain't meant for me to be there all the time. But if I put it in you one time, once and for all. 
Hallelujah. Read on. Verse 7. For Yahweh has not given us. Hey, my son, Archie, I love you, boy. Go ahead. Uh, for Yahweh has not given us the spirit of moral cowardice. Wait a minute. Come on, sir. Come on. This is what I can't stand, cowards. Come on. Everybody you're not to get along with. When you get along with everybody, you better check who you are. Because sometimes they said in the word that even at the sight of Yahshua the Messiah, demons tremble. So if demons ain't trembling at your sight, hmm? if, they're not de if they're not trembling when you appear, something wrong. I can go anywhere. And they can smoke tons of weed before I get there. But I promise you, if they know I'm coming, the weed out the door, the air is clear, and as hard as it may be, they're going to be as sober as they can be. Huh? Yeah. Because that's who I am. And guess what? That's who you are. I didn't ask him to clean up. I would have went in with the weed. No, I wouldn't. I'm scared of drugs. I am. I never went. If you got more than a, a joint, and if I know you got a joint, I'm out of there. Amen. Amen. You ain't riding in my car or none of that. I'm not doing it. A roach? Do they call them roaches anymore? They don't call them roaches. They don't call it reefer no more either. Y'all know how long it's been, right? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I just don't, I, I can't do it. The, 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 the worst thing you could ever do is to offer me a ride and you dirty. Because they ain't going to have to call the police. I'm going to whoop you like I never, we're going to fight. Because that is one thing that I am terrified. I don't, I've never been around drugs. I got caught one time in high school, and they gave me how I ended up with the bag of drugs, weed. And the craziest thing, Tamara, it was a drummer in my church. I should have left on that Friday, but I was going to hang and talk because I never associate with people. I ended up with a whole bag of weed in my hand. And they were so pissed with me because I looked up and saw the dean of boys coming. And instead of him running after me, I ran to him. <laughs> and I put the whole bag of weed in his hand. And my next words out of my mouth, you ain't going to tell my mama, are you? That's the kind of boy I was. They took me to the dean. And I sung like a mockingbird. They went and got everybody that I gave the names to. They handcuffed us all and took us to jail. But they kept trying to tell me, instead of running to the dean, I heard him say, blow it in the wind. Blow it in the wind. I didn't know what that meant. I did not know it. So I've never been involved with drugs. I never want to be. I don't, you know, I know people do, and I'm not knocking you. Or no, I, don't, I don't know. I don't know how you can do it. My, my daughter the other day, I can say it, can't I? Pulled up at Walmart. And we know them people are upset. She got out of her car, and right there on the ground was two huge rocks that somebody had dropped. I told her, girl, step on it. Let it mash into the dirt and the, the water. Amen. Get rid of that. Now that's when you would have really seen who was sanctified. Because baby, the saints grab you. Hey. Now, I would have told her to back out, 
I'm getting back in the car, but back out because I ain't getting out on that side. The police will never come and think that that's mine. <laughs> Hallelujah. So I never involved myself with that. So there's a lot of things I just don't involve. What I involve myself with is cooking and feeding people. Other than that, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't. I used to drink every now and then, but I don't even do that. When you get young, you don't want to do that either. You drink a half a glass of wine and go to sleep. You don't even need wine. Just sit down and watch TV and go to sleep. Everything. Have you found yourself eat a piece of bread go to sleep? That's something, ain't it? I don't know what's going on here. Hey, man, just a cup of soup sleep. Make you pray, Father, what's going on here? Hallelujah. I just ate a pizza roll. <laughs> Amen. Did somebody say you sleep? No, I'm just resting my just laying resting my eyes. Come. Can't even take a half a slice of bread no more. What's going on with us? I started. Well, I messed myself up because I started, I went down to eat once a day, which was, I think, the worst thing to do because now my stomach is strong. Now I can only eat a little bit, amen, before I am completely full. I'm trying to eat two meals a day. And yesterday I thought I was going to be growing and eat two hot dogs. And I tell you, I ate that hot dog. That first one was really good. And I went to go into that second one. It was like, I can't not do it. I tried my best. Amen. I'm trying to get back up to two meals at least a day. I did do breakfast the other day. That was a good thing. Amen. Uh, but, you know, don't ever do one meal a day. I, I'm, I'm telling you, that one meal, that one meal a day shrunk my stomach, and it shrinks quicker than you think. It stops you. If you ever want to lose weight, I don't know if everybody can do it this way, but that one meal a day will make your stomach shrink, and you cannot go past that shrinkage. Amen. Hallelujah. But it's not healthy to eat one meal a day. You need to eat at least three meals or seven small meals a day. I'm, 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 I'm working on getting better. Amen. Don't y'all go all no, no meal fast. Amen. Read on. I'm trying to get to 14. I'm not going to make it. Where am I at? You are kidding me. You need to leave, Ashley. You ain't telling the truth. You say I'm just at seven? I opened up on six. I left last week on six. And I've been an hour on the floor. I'm not at seven. No, I'm just leaving six. But y'all got the point, don't you? Come on. Verse 7. For Yahweh has not given us the spirit of moral cowardice. We, doesn't, we, do, we don't have the spirit of moral cowardness. In the KJV, it says the spirit of fear. Moral cowardness. That means we're bold soldiers. Now, that don't mean things won't knock us to our feet. Our covering is one another. We're going to fall. We are going to fall. But we should be so united that we cover. I pray that I got enough people around me that if something would go wrong with me, you got me covered. <clears throat> you ain't got me exposed. I told you, I don't want my all out on Facebook and and, and pray for our bishop. Yeah. Hell, they didn't pray for me when I was all right. Yeah. Hell, ain't no need of going on there asking for prayer. Yeah. I don't want that prayer. Yeah. On, I'm in the hands of the Father. Yeah. So whatever he chooses to do, that's his choice. Yeah. We all are here on board time. Yeah. We know not the day nor the hour, 
We all, including myself, want to live here, live here to be old. But I don't want to be here to be, live here to be old where you got to change my diaper and all of that. I never forget, I read an article, a man was 145 years old. And he asked the question, why has the father forgotten me? Everybody's gone. I'm just here. I'm talking about I'm just here and here. I'm just want to live. We won't talk. <laughs> Read on. Being timid and fearful. Being timid and fearful. <clears throat> but of power. When you are of power, and I'm going to stop here. When you have power, uh -huh. it's something that works in you. Now, I always want you to remember that we weeble wobbles, but they don't fall down. Being in the power of the Holy Ghost, you're still a weeble, and you do wobble, but you don't fall down. I love all of you. I pray that, and I know that I've said something, to enlighten your heart, to better your pathway, and to get you started, yes. fan the flames of the gifts of Yahweh. And greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Put your hands together and give him a prayer. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I do want to say before I go off the air, we do open up the Feast of Passover on Monday. 7.30, amen, I am the opening speaker, amen, as always, and this year is the leap year, which the Feast of Passover will last all the way to the 30th of April, then we go immediately into the Feast of Unleavened Bread, and it will convene its normal seven days, on May the 4th is our official day, and I want to invite everybody, that is the day that we show up as all days, go to the mountain. Yeah. And that's when we feed everybody. And we have a good time. The colors are all white. I'm seeing it now in case you need to buy it. Yeah. And get it together. Amen. The colors are all white. No, we did not put any colors with it. The Spirit told me all white. All white. Amen. All white. Amen. So we want you to get yourself, gird up the loins of your mind. Yeah. Suzette, and let's get ready for some church. But we are entering into the Feast of the Passover. Love you all. Bless you all. Until next week, I won't be back with this message again until the Feast of Unleavened Bread has completed, which is the 7th of May. So then I will complete this message. Amen. Love each and every one of you. May the Spirit of the Almighty go before you. Fan the flame of the gifts of the Father within you. Amen. For the power of him is within your soul. We love each and every one of you. Amen. Be blessed.